How are we doing today? Good. All right. Plugging along. We're still in camp. Um, you never arrive. That's the thing about athletics and you're always fighting human nature. You have a good day, you can't relax, you got to come back with a better day because you get better, you get worse, you never stay the same. So you got to keep the standards high, you can never lower your standards. So what makes this a great game is the edge, the difference between victory and defeat is always very narrow. Um, and it's a mindset in terms of consistency and performance and playing at a high level, day in, day out, play in, play out. It's a mindset. It's not normal. Uh, and I think we've made progress in that area, uh, day in, day out. Our highs aren't as high and our lows aren't as low. And play in, play out. But we're still not there because you never get there. <laughs> you always got to play the next play. Get ready for the next day. You know, constantly changing uh, situations. Uh, stimuli in this business. You guys write articles and it's boom, on paper, fixed in print, permanent, forever and ever. We deal more in processes. You guys deal more with finite things than we do. So that's why we're all so process oriented. So I definitely think we've made progress, uh, but we're still in camp and we're not there yet. I'm sure we asked you this at some point in the offseason, but both Coach Haynes and Coach Shanahan, they've been with you for a long time. Obviously, you've elevated them, you know, in terms of their positions and their responsibilities over time. What has maybe from your perspective as a head coach made those guys a good fit for you as coordinators, as assistants, to just keep kind of bringing to your various different stops? Well, it's not so much a fit for me as it is hiring the best person for the program at that particular time. And then... They're no different than me. You know, they're accountable. They got to produce year in, year out. Uh, but they're good at what they do, and they have. Uh, you know, Bryant uh, had an excellent football mind when I lost Corey Heatherman, who's now the DC at Minnesota. Uh, Bryant was the best candidate. Uh, he was ready for the job. Mike, his particular situation, uh, when I had a vacancy, um, he had been with me a while. He knew the offense. He knew the areas we had to improve. And I was able to hire a quarterback guy uh, that I thought would be really good for the program because Mike's focused on receivers. So, because um, it was best for the program. Now, obviously, everything that has to do with this program has to fit and align with my philosophy. The players we recruit, the people we bring in, coaches and players. But I've seen those guys grow from being the real young coaches, and they're still young. But I've seen them progress every year. Uh, yeah, Kurt, in terms of you, you haven't spoken to us since Nick Kidwell suffered his injury. Um, kind of what does that do? How big of a setback at guard is, is that? And you know, I know you were excited about him coming back for the fall after yeah. he set out spring and he got a medical waiver to play this year, how hard was that to see him go down with another injury? It, well, it, on a personal level, it's really hard because, uh, you know, Nick's been <clears throat> with the program really since 2019, was actually there in 18 before I got hired. And uh, he started a lot of games, played a lot of football. Uh, he's a good player. He really uh, put a lot of time in rehabbing, coming back, um, was rounding back in the form. Uh, was a big part of our initial plans. And, and I feel bad uh, for him uh, because I, I know what his goals uh, were coming into the season. And uh, you, when you've been with a player that long, uh, you know, because of the COVID year, you're with guys longer now. He's 24 years old. And, uh, but as I look back since 2019, you know, we've lost an all-conference or all-American one or two every year in camp or early in the season, and usually on the D-line or O-line, and, and had to overcome those, and we have. So it, it's a next man up mentality, and right now you got Bray Lynch, Drew Evans, and Tyler Stevens as sort of a, a triangle in there, three for two. And uh, they're capable, and I have confidence in them. Um, 
So, you know, we'll see what the future holds for Nick. Hey, Coach. Obviously, you guys know what you got with Zach Horton there at tight end. Just want to see, I want to know what you've seen behind him. If anybody stepping up, anybody kind of standing out that you feel comfortable with, you know, putting him out there when Zach needs some, obviously, some you know, has come off the field. Yeah. Well, Zach's doing a nice job. He's had a good camp, a uh, good player, loves football, you know, kind of a blood and guts, blue collar guy, got a nasty edge to him, uh, and athleticism. Yeah, you know, we got some guys back there we're, we're working with Bomba, Walker, Foley. Uh, Sam West, you know, Sam West was a quarterback in high school, good, good athlete, uh, good receiver, kind of, uh, you know, never had to block really in high school because uh, he was quarterback. Uh, so he's developing that area. Uh, we got some young guys behind them. So, you know, that competition is still kind of playing out. We'll see how, what happens. Got any love for Jack? <clears throat> Kurt, uh, you got a very deep running back room, a lot of guys who have experience. Uh, where is that process at? And where are those guys, are you starting to see any separation between those guys? And yeah. where's that kind of at? Well, you know, that, that's a position where you, I feel good about our depth. You got to have good depth because I've lost four in a game before. Uh, you know, I've had a couple of years ago, I had to put a walk on receiver back there and get him some carries at the end of the game. Uh, you know, those guys can go down quick. You know, I think when you look at uh, Allison, Black, and Lott, they're, you know, if they all walked in the room, they're all about the same height, weight, uh, body composition. Uh, they're, they're slightly different in some of their skill sets when you watch them very closely, but they all can take it inside, outside, pass, protect, and catch the ball out of the backfield. And yeah, you know, normally we would like to play three backs in a game. Uh, if I had to go back and break down, uh, you know, last five, six years. Uh, Van Horse is also a guy that very good out of the backfield. Return game, can still take the ball between the tackles. He's a tough guy. And uh, Green from UNC, you know, is a good downhill runner. So... Um, they work hard every day because there's really good competition. But normally, we're going to use at least three a game. Jack and Seth, yeah, since um, Drew Evans and, and Lynch, since they don't have a lot of in-game experience, what have you kind of seen from them in practice that stood out to you? And then from your time coaching Tyler Stevens at, uh, at JMU, what, what were kind of ways that you feel like he could help you? Mm -hmm. Well, both those guys have played probably limited football up to this point. but. You know, it's time. It's their time. Bray Lynch is a year older. Uh, Drew Evans is a real smart guy. He's got good uh, natural strength. Bray Lynch has good movement. Uh, Tyler Stevens has started a lot of games at tackle, guard. He's working some center now. Bob Bob's working four or five different guys at center. Uh, so, uh, like I said before, they're all capable, and uh, we need them to step up. Kurt, the kicking game field goal unit, you know, what have you seen from Derek, Derek McCormick uh, this fall? Just And I guess what's the level of confidence you have in his range and I guess also in his ability to handle pressure moments? Well, the kickoff, he's the kickoff guy. Um, and he's in competition for the field goal job along with uh, Nico and Alex. So, uh, I, you know, that's been a pretty intense competition. I don't know who. We'll come out on top. It could be a situation where we have a field goal kicker and a guy that kicks an extra long field goal for us. So we've, we've spent a lot of time on PAT field goal, more so than my past camps. Because when you start talking about winning those close games, you know, it, it, it's really the guy, they're all capable. Like they all have good kicking percentages, kick the ball through the uprights. Now it's the pressure of the moment, you know, and being able to focus in on their technique and what they got to do to, to split that up right, not an inch to the right, not an inch to the left. Is that competition you see something like, you know, ahead of the season, I'm just going to name a guy and that's going to be that's gonna be who we're going to go with, or is that something that you could continue developing as you go into the regular season? All these positions where there's competition and it's essential to, uh, you know, have a guy that you're going to try to ride the whole season, I think you want to know going in. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned, you know, the, the close, you know, trying to win 
you know, close late. I want to say you all last year played in six of them where it was one score late. You went five and one. I think IU went two and four. What makes a team successful when it's, you know, one score late, close? And when you went back and watched IU last year in those um, one score, again, close, why, why was the success not there? Well, I think that's what we throw all our time and efforts into. You know, I've got a philosophy. Uh, the assistant coaches preach the philosophy. We have a way of doing things. We have a way we play the game so that at the end of the game in those moments, we, we can play our best football. It's all about 11 guys doing, doing what they're supposed to do, and the whole becomes greater in the sum of its parts. So, uh, and, you know, they've got to have confidence and belief, be able to compartmentalize, put the last play behind them, total focus on this play, and then do it again and again and again, right? So um, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't even run out of the tunnel for our first game, right? But, you know, in the past, we've been really good in those situations. And I expect us to be really good again. Zach, Ian, Trent, and Mark. You mentioned the process-oriented kind of style that you run. How have you seen the guys, the players, the coaches, the people around the program adapt and get acclimated to that process throughout fall camp? Yeah, I really think that we've made uh, very significant, tangible strides. And uh, I think they like, the players like the way we practice. And um, we're getting there. Mark, and we'll wrap with Does the modern world of NIL and transfer portal make your job here easier or more difficult to build the program you want? Yeah, well, uh, that's a good question. Because, uh, you know, when you lose an All-American in the portal, <laughs> you're cursing the portal. But then... When you're able to bring in 30 new guys, you like the portal. And I think in our particular situation, uh, there were so many in the portal that when I got hired, first day I was here, we had so many in that, uh, you know, I, I felt really good about, and I think the portal was a plus. So I think it was easier. But now you look at us, this football team, 31, 32 seniors this year, and we got to do this again in December. So you'd like to get to a point where that roster balances out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? By class, senior, junior, sophomore, freshman, so you don't have these huge gaps that we have right now in our junior and sophomore class. Yeah, you suffered some injuries at corner. Um, have you moved Nick Toomer back to corner to kind of give you guys some depth? And, and what are you guys kind of doing at corner to kind well, of Jameer protect Well, Jameer Johnson has, was out uh, for a couple of days. He was back today. Pons is back today. Um, so, um, Toomer has been back, and, but he's been out the last couple of days. So, um, JoJo, we expect him back. Um, it'll be a couple of weeks. Are you worried about your depth there? Or you well, I mean, you'd like to be too deep. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.